Hello, welcome back to the channel. I, uh, I'm, I'm going to address an issue which is doing my head in. <laughs> so if this turns out to be a rant, I do apologise. But I've got to get it off my chest because it's, yeah, it's doing my head in. Um, if you're an, a newbie photographer, I'm going to say it's a newbie photographer thing, you need to understand what apertures do in relation to your photograph, in relation to the environment, because I don't know why, but people seem to obsess over buying prime lenses and shooting everything wide open. They will go out and they'll buy a 50mm prime, 1.2, and they'll shoot absolutely everything at 1.2 because they're obsessed with this background blur. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. Now, um, obviously, that's not what the idea of, of having a variable aperture lens is, and so that you stick everything at 1.2 all the time or whatever. So that's what we're talking about today. Now, this video is actually sponsored by a 1.2 lens. Right? This is the Viltrox uh, 27mm 1.2, which Viltrox very kindly sent me. So yes, I'm a sellout. Uh, yeah, that's the Viltrox 27mm that they sent me. And I will say straight away that you don't need a 1.2 lens for street photography. It's absolute nonsense. If anything, an F2 would be perfect. So yeah, if you're going to buy a Prime, you don't want to be a 1.2 for street photography, unless it's low light stuff particularly. So in this video, I want to I want to address the obsession so we're going to shoot the entire video with the Viltrox 27mm which is a lovely lens 40mm equivalent so I love the 40mm equivalent I'll probably prefer it to 50 actually so it's a really really nice lens I've used it for loads of events and whatnot so I really am I really am endorsing the lens it's fantastic but we're going to shoot the entire video uh, which pissed it down with rain the whole time at 1.2 just to prove a point because there's several times in the video where I lose my rag <laughs> because I can't stand the problems which, that come with shooting wide open. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Before we get into that, I want to talk about something that's happened recently um, and that is I lost a hard drive. So all my street photography, my landscape photography is gone. I'm smiling about it because I think it's been able to be recovered. So if you take nothing else from this video, as soon as you finish this video, get your cloud system sorted. Now my professional work, or my professional hard drives, bear in mind I've got 15 hard drives which I use. So it's very difficult for me to back up all the time. So my landscape and my street photography w was never backed up um, this year. The previous ones were, but this year, 2023, hasn't been. So. Um, I'm using Backblaze now. It's ten pound a month. They're not sponsoring this channel. They do not know exist. But if you take nothing out from this video, get your files backed up. Yes, it's not a case of if it happens to you. It's when it happens to you. Right? Your spinny hard drives and apparently even the SSDs can back up. So yes, got that off my chest. And fingers crossed, I'll let you know in the next couple of weeks whether or not I've had the bill, <laughs> how much this cost to get it back, and what percentage of the files, which will have no metadata or anything like that, um, how much I'll get back. So yeah, do 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 that. <laughs> right then, here we go. So Viltrox 27mm 1.2. Um, now it's a really bad habit. If you're starting off as a photographer and you're seeing all these influencers that shoot everything wide open at 1.2, because they, they're not considering um, the background, they're not considering uh, proximity when you get close to something your depth of field is a lot closer is a lot smaller so there's loads of the same goes for shooting at f8 which we've mentioned in the video as well but you should you need to master your camera settings you need to understand when to shoot at 1.2 when to shoot at 2.8 when to shoot at f4 you know what what the gains um, of each of those settings are, what you and help your camera out because if you're shooting at 1.2, you're gonna ha you're gonna rely massively on your autofocus, continuous autofocus, because they've got no depth of field and you can't pre-focus um, to to anticipate where a where a person's going to be in a frame. So if you're shooting everything at 1.2, you're going to be in continuous autofocus all the time, and it's going to be a pain in the ass. And in this video, I really flipping hated it. I've got to be honest with you. So I will never be shooting 1.2 again unless they specifically need it for that one photograph. But my go-to aperture absolutely will never be 1.2, even if I'm shooting weddings or events. I just I just can't shoot like that. It's just ridiculous. Think about what you need to do what's important in your frame. You should always think about what's important for the photograph, all right? And it's never gonna be 1.2. It's just, even portraits, it's just crap. It's honestly, just learn how to use a camera properly. I told you it's gonna be a rant. Learn how to use a camera, a camera properly. Understand proximity, understand what different focal lengths do to an aperture, and then understand how things can go completely tits up if you're using with the wrong aperture. We all do it, even now, the other day, I shot a wedding at F2, and I, I, because I got too close to something, the person in the background wasn't enough in the picture, sharp, 
to tell the story. So that photograph didn't work. If I'd have shot it at f4 or f5.6, it would have been a lot better. So we all do it, still do it. Um, but yeah, there we are. Let's get into the video. <laughs> okay, the camera is set to, the lens is set to 1.2 which is going to give us absolutely no, no depth of field. And obviously, remember, the closer you get to something, the less depth of field you get. So that's going to be, it might be a problem. Um, my minimum shutter speed, because we're a really fast aperture, I'm going to get away with a 500 of a second minimum, even indoors, because we're letting loads and loads of light in. So that's a positive. Um, now, because we are getting absolutely no depth of field at 1.2, especially at close up, we're going to have to change the focus. So I've gone into AFC mode, so the camera's going to be continuously auto-focusing. Um, but obviously that means as the, as the, see it's already started to play up, as the person comes towards, we are relying heavily on, on the camera's autofocus. So if we have any problems with the camera's autofocus, the lens being at 1.2 is not going to be very forgiving at all. So yes, that might cause us some problems. A guy just come up to me and I was only taking this picture. Uh, I wasn't taking this picture, I was only taking a picture. And he had a go at me for uh, filming. I said, I'm not filming, I'm taking a photograph. And he said, well, in my job, you've got to give permission and all I get permission. And I said, well, I'm not in your job, am I? I said, like, you know, I don't really see the problem. So he's walked off to find security. I've decided to stay to see what security says, see what happens. I'm not going anywhere. And uh, I, I, I don't know if I'm on property. I'm on private property, really. It's an entrance to the supermarket, isn't it? But what a good start anyway. So, yes, wait for this guy. I've been in the town for 10 minutes and already going to get confrontation. <laughs> a freaking good start, isn't it? So I've just been taking a few shots waiting for it to, for no one to be here really. What I'd normally do with this sort of photograph is, uh, is focus on that back back area and know that on say like a 35 mil, which you get, you get away with it on the, on, on the, you get away with it on this lens, but on a 35 mil, sort of 2.8 and above, maybe F4, you'd have enough depth of field there. But with, um, with 1.2, you can't. So you're relying on the camera's autofocus to track to track the people as they go, which means that you've, it's really hard for me to get the composition. It's, it, I, I would like just to leave the camera sort of there, focus on the back wall like that, and then wait for the person to come into the frame. But of course I can't do that because I need to make sure that the, the, um, the focal point is, is gonna track them. So yeah, it's quite difficult. Let's have that. Oh no, the guy with the hat might be quite cool. Right, well I've just been kicked out of Cabot Circus by possibly four or five of the nicest security guards ever. They were really, really nice. After that guy complained, I think he obviously could get through to management and they were really nice. The top, top, <laughs> coincidentally there was a meeting in there, the top guys from uh, security, all in suits came out and spoke to me, but they were very, very nice and they took my card and they said, we will um, give you a permission card so next time you come in, I can always shoot they'll know who I am and I'll have permission to do workshops and stuff in there so that's really cool but I showed them my magazine I showed them uh, f8 I showed them the sort of photographs I do and they were absolutely you know, like these are really really cool you can see that you're not doing any harm they're not you're not a threat to security so they, they, they it's always good to have some photographs you can show security just in case I but yes yeah, so I got kicked out of there and they said why don't you get down to the other one down the road I said isn't that private property as well he said yes yeah. so when are we gonna kick back up there but it's bloody pissing it down out here Nasty. <laughs> a guy, I just asked permission if I could take his picture doing the sewing through the window that looked quite good. Um, but what, again, 1.2 isn't the aperture I'd use for this. I'd definitely be at like minimum 2.8. But I think it looks really good. So uh, I'll, send, I'll give him a card. I'm going to send him some pictures so he can use them on his social media. So yeah, 1.2 on the Viltrox. Let's give it beans. in this 1.2 malarkey because I've taken a few shots. Guy with the sewing machine there, lady with a dog, is it raining still? Lady with a dog between, the dog was sort of between their legs and the 1.2 meant the dog's eyes were sharp but their legs weren't sharp. I know that it's not going to be sharp, there's no point kidding myself, but the detail in the jeans is going to be completely lost at 1.2, especially because I was only about two, maybe three meters away, so proximity is a problem. Um, so 1.2 absolutely d d didn't work for that shot, but I had to do 1.2. It needed at least f4, f maybe even f5.6 to get the, the context right. So with street photography, it's all about considering what context you're trying to capture. So like the environment is dead important. Um, and with a 1.2 lens or a 1.8 lens, unless you're like we were at the, be at the, at the beginning of the shoot with far away from the subject, 
proximity is going to be a problem and then you're, you're just not going to get depth of field. So um, a few of the photographs I've taken just randomly. The other thing is I'm not enjoying the um, using that AFC mode with a single point, single point focus mode because I like to be able to just set my focus at a zone, say two meters or infinity, and I like to just be able to walk around not worrying about the camera missing focus. And of course, at 1.2, I can't do that. I'm, I'm really paranoid about the camera missing focus. Um, I don't trust Fuji's at the best of time for focus. So very sorry to interrupt, but I can't keep making these videos without your support. So I really do appreciate every single one of you that has downloaded my zine. This is F8, and this is an example of one of the images in the magazine. And basically, just to use this and pick on this image, if you will, uh, the point of the magazine isn't so it's deep. It's a digital zine, so you can download it instantly and put it on your iPad like we've got here. But the it, the point of the the zine isn't to to say, hey, look at my pictures, look how amazing I am, and none of that sort of fluffing <laughs> it's it's all about actually showing you where i've uh, yes okay it'd be an image i like but then how i could have improved it so for example with this image it actually says at the bottom what the camera settings were and then in the text beneath beneath the photograph it actually says where i effed up so i actually used 125th of a second because i was actually demonstrating on a workshop uh, how I go on my camera from indoors to outdoors really, really quickly and change the minimum shutter speed. But then when I came back outside and I was talking to the guy and watching his camera as we were taking photos on his camera, when I took a shot on mine, I hadn't changed back to my outside 250th minimum, maybe 500th minimum shutter. So these photographs, some of them are really, you know, I like the pictures, but then it will say basically how I effed up and you can learn from that. So yeah, that is the point of the magazine. So obviously there's there's 40 images in the, in, in the zine. And we'll, as soon as we get the hard drive back, we'll start on the next issue, and uh, yeah, we can uh, we can const we can continue forward. But again, massive massive support um, from every single one of you who've downloaded the zine. It's a huge huge help for the channel. I can't make, keep making these videos without them. So yeah, massive thank you, and uh, check out F8 if you haven't done already. Let's get back to the video. So I found what would be a good shot. In fact, I just found another one as well looking behind me. Um, this is a really really cool walkway here and in black and white I've got the camera in black and white and it looks really really good but I'll show you a photograph at this taken at 1.2 focused at what would be infinity and you'll just see that there's I, I, I would imagine that there's just gonna be nowhere near enough depth of field so part of the problem with shooting wide open is we're shooting at a small um, very massive aperture like 1.2 is that if unless the thing that you've focused on is close enough to the frame. So like, if I was focused, my face was focused at 1.2 there, the, fo the, fo the, the, the picture would look sharp. But if the thing you focused on at 1.2 is over there, then the whole photograph is gonna look soft because that insignificant part of the, the photograph, that it's just not gonna look sharp. The photograph's not gonna look sharp. So a huge reason why I stay away from 1.2s and stuff like that is unless you're filling the frame with that focused subject, it's just not gonna look sharp. Wow. Now, I am gutted that was at 1.2, because what do you reckon the chances of her being sharp? I pre-focused at the back. Oh, see, it's not, she's not sharp. The back is sharp. But she's not. So if that was f4, or f, even f2.8, she would have been sharp. Well, that's pissed me off, that is. So what, exactly what I thought would happen has happened, and I'm gutted. Because that, that photograph is, would have been good. And I'm gutted, so that's it. I'm not sure you're doing 1.2 anymore. That's really annoying me, because uh, I, I would have liked that photograph. Heavens have opened again, it's absolutely ridiculous, but I'm a bit, I'm a bit, bit happier because I managed to set the camera at 2.8, so the lens is at 2.8 now, the minimum <laughs> for street photography or for pretty much everything. Um, I'll with them, brother. I can't get the reflection. No. But I'm cheered up a little bit because I managed to get a few shots. People with umbrellas coming down here are quite cool. I'm still using the autofocus on, on the lens. And it's doing all right, I have to say, even in low light, the autofocus is doing really well. So I'm really, really pleased. But 1.6, 2.8, I feel a lot more confident at 
getting some decent shots now, so I missed the, the good one of her coming in front of that light at the bottom, I think. I didn't see the shot in time, so I missed the light. Foot's up there is quite good, and the one before that was quite good as well. Uh, where is it? The lady walking towards me, the light catching the top of the umbrella was really nice. So she falls completely into darkness. And you've got the lines coming in from both bottom corners as well, which I quite like as well. So that's a 2.8. I just know that there's going to be more depth of field, more sharpness. She's not going to be separated too much from the background. So I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to be quite happy with her. I'm actually enjoying this lens. I'll say that the weight of it for street photography is doing my head in a little bit, especially when I'm trying to film with this camera and handhold the cat film with the video camera and handhold this camera, the weight is unnecessary. So that's a bit frustrating, but the lens itself is absolutely wonderful. I do wish I'd bought the lens hood though, because I, uh, I don't like lens hoods when I'm doing street photography, because they, uh, they, they make the freaking lens look even bigger sort of thing. So the lens hood would have been a good thing today, because I'm constantly wiping the damn lens with rain. Other than that, um, I'm glad I'm not shooting at 1.2 now, because I just think if you're confident with your autofocus, 1.2 might not be so bad, especially if you're over sort of five meters. But if, you're, if, some, if your subject's getting quite close to you, that 1.2 is really gonna start causing problems and I did not enjoy it. So, um, but the same goes for F8, because my normal way of shooting is F8 and be there. So on a 35 mil field of view, I like shooting F8 and just not worrying about the focus. So I like zone focusing. But then there's been times when I've come back, looked at a photograph, that's been shot at say f8 500 of a second and uh, the iso has been 6400 where it didn't need to be f8 because it's at infinity and it didn't need to be 500 of a second so the same sort of problem applies to that mindset as it does to a shooting afc like autofocus continuous with a 1.2 so you know not to say that f8 or shooting at f11 all the time is right either so it's exactly as i said before just knowing what you're trying to achieve what's important is the background is the, is the background context important? Are you trying to get the environment? Because for documentary photography, you want everything sharp as front and back, really. But for street photography, sometimes you might want to isolate something. Uh, if you want to get abstract, or you want to get details or whatever, sometimes that separation is really important. But you've just really got to know that 1.2 or 1.4 or 1.8, whatever it is you're using, isn't always the right tool for the job. So practice obviously makes perfect. I'm getting freaking soaked and this camera's going to be no good in the bloody rain. Well, it's absolutely chucking it down now, but I really want to get a, a, a attempt at a photograph on this on this industrial estate here with the... they got to be anybody with an umbrella coming down here, it's got to be good. So I'm going to give this five minutes down here in the actual soaking wet. Um, now I've got to say that the camera is soaked and the lens is obviously weather sealed and it seems to be doing really, really well. It seems to be holding off, but... If I get a good shot down here, it might be reflecting and uh, we'll, go, we'll call it a day then because I'm getting blooming drenched and it's just not fun. Not fun at all. I literally just got the camera down, flip the screen out and this guy walked straight into the shot there, like that lady's going to do. Um, This other lady might do it as well. I'm underexposed a bit though. This guy just walked straight into the shot and I can't flipping believe the photograph I've just got. Um, the, cut, the lens isn't wide enough, but I still think it works. So a bit of a reflection. Just get the lady on the thing there. Looks all right, there's another girl coming now. We're obviously autofocus continuous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait for 
yes, well, I hope you enjoyed that little video. It was a bit of fun in Bristol, absolutely soaked. <laughs> Got some okay pictures, that was enjoyable. Um, so yeah, I'm not filming this video now at 1.2 because I want you to look at my face <laughs> poor you, and see this lens relatively sharp as well. So, you know, you do see some massive YouTubers that film everything at stupid apertures, and they're trying to show you a product, and the damn product's blurry because they're obsessing over the background being blurred. You know the ones I'm talking about. Everybody watches them. So it's, yeah, it's always about thinking. So we're recording this video at F5. Right, because I want some depth of field to show you the damn product, right? So we're filming at f5 on about 14 mil on the Fuji XT4. But yeah, it's it's a fantastic lens. I will say the massive thank you to Viltrox. I hope sorry if this video turned out to be a bit of a rant, but ranting is the only way you get through to some people sometimes. So if this isn't if this isn't you, and I'm sure it isn't you, then uh, yeah, fair enough. But the Viltrox 27 mil is absolutely superb. It did all day in the rain. It got absolutely soaked, as did the XT5. They did extremely well all day in the rain and no issues whatsoever. I very, very rarely shoot like that, never ever. So the weather ceiling, massively uh, impressed with that. The autofocus, absolutely no issue. I've done a few events with it at 1.2 when I've needed to do really low lights. A very, very handy, to, handy lens to have in my low light concerts and stuff like that. I do some extremely low light concerts, candlelit sometimes. So 1.2 for me is, is really, really good. Uh, but again, I know when to use it. Um, and it's just brilliant. And also you can actually use the Vilshox lenses. I've got the 75 mil as well. You can actually use these lenses wide open at 1.2. So if you did buy them thinking you need to stop down a bit to 1.8 and that's the reason why you buy 1.2 sometimes, used to be the way. These ones you can actually definitely use wide open at 1.2. They are lovely and sharp. So yes. Anyway, thank you again to Vilshox. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the run. <laughs> Let me know if you liked any of the pictures and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.